Hi everybody. In this video we're just going to have a look at how we can insert data into our database tables. So in the previous video we created our members table, okay? So we're just going to very quickly just jump back and show that we have our create table members and our members table is made up of a member ID which is an integer value which is going to auto increment for us. So every time we insert something it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And we have a first name, which is a varkar, which is going to be a string. A last name, which is a varkar, which is a string. We have our date of birth, which is a date. So it's going to be a year, a month, and a day. And we have an email address, which is a string, which is our varkar. And we have set a primary key, which is our member ID. So the primary key is basically saying that the member ID is going to be the unique identifier for the members database table. Okay, so fantastic. But now we want to be able to get some information into our table. So we've seen in week one that we could use our, you know, our database management systems or whatever tools are available to us to be able to use graphical user interfaces to be able to add some information to our database table. So that's one way of entering information. A more effective or efficient uh, mechanism is to use our SQL or SQL statements. So we're going to use the structured query language to be able to insert information to a database table. So let's say that we wanted to add in John McCarthy, a date of birth, and an email address for a given person. Okay. So we want to be able to insert the information so that we have an instance or a record or a row or a tuple of information stored in the members database table, which will be John McCarthy, whatever date and an email address. OK, so we have to use specific keywords, which is part of the structured query language to be able to add information to a database table. So we're going to use the insert keyword to add data to a table. So the syntax that it follows is it goes insert into whatever table we want to add the information to the columns that we want to populate the information for. So it doesn't have to be for all columns. Now, we may have restrictions in place that specific fields uh, will be set to be not null, i.e. it must contain a value or the record won't be stored in the database table for us. We'll see that at a later date, so we'll try and keep it simple at the moment, okay? So insert into, our example will be members, and we're going to be looking at the columns, so it'll be first name, last name, date of birth, and email. Then we specify values. These are the values that are going to be stored into these columns. So we have three columns listed here. So we're going to have three values here, okay? So they kind of match up. That value one goes into column one. Value two, value two goes into column two. And value three goes into column three, okay? So the insert statement specifies the columns that the data will be stored in. The data is defined after the values keyword. So kind of the information that we're adding, the kind of very specific information, which is our, our record or our row instance, this comes after values, okay? So the sequence of the data being entered matches the list of columns after the ta table name. So if we're inserting text to a table, it's gonna follow a very specific format, okay? So when we're entering our text, so this will be after our values, that if we're entering a string or a var car into the column for let's say first name it's going to be John John being a string or text goes inside single quotes okay um, so that's quite important as well okay so we'll see that when we kind of come into our little example okay so insert into whatever table name so our table name is going to be um, members so we may as well even just change that on the fly Insert into, insert into members, first name, last name, age, and I can go for values for John McCarthy and 21. 
Now, we said that the string values that are being inserted into a var car field are going to be in single quotes. The numeric value is just inserted as is. We're not treating it as a string. It's a numeric value, so it's not put inside single quotes, okay? So just be careful of the differentiation between two of those, okay? So now we need to be able to insert something to our database table, okay? So I'm just going to swap back to my MySQL Workbench, and I'm going to use this for my little example, okay? So I'm just going to squash this down a bit. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit, okay? Just so we can get a, a better look at what's happening, okay? Okay, maybe a bit too much. We want to be able to see the results, okay? Excellent. So let's see what we have. Oh, okay. That's better. Okay, so what we have is our DIT database and our tables. So we have one table which is called members, and the members is made up of member ID, a first name, a last name, a date of birth, and an email. Okay, I'm going to leave them sit there, make my life a little bit easier. So, <coughs> okay, so let's see how this works in um, action for us. Okay, so I had some queries already pre populated in the database table, so I just cleared those out. And it's going to zoom in a little bit so we can see a little more clearly what's going on. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, syntax. I want to add some information to, so maybe the John McCarthy example. Let's see if we get that into the database. So, I had, I think I had seven rows already in the database table and I've deleted them. So, fantastic. Insert into the database table is called members. I'm going to put my two roundy brackets in first and I'm going to come back to it. Values, two roundy brackets, and whatever. Okay, perfect. So insert into members. What are we going to insert? I want to insert someone's first name, their last name, their date of birth, and their email. Okay, and then I'll just bring this down a new line, values. Okay, so now the insert into members in roundy brackets, first name, last name, date of birth, and email. These are our columns, okay? So these are the attributes that are associated with our database table. This is the information we're storing. So these, the sequence that I have here matches what I'm going to insert into values. So the first thing I'm going to deal with is the first name. Inside single quotes, John, comma, single quotes, McCarthy. Uh, my date of birth. Now, the, the syntax, now we have to be careful with syntax, okay? So the date of birth is going to follow year, four digit year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day. So let's say I go for 1980. And I'll say it's the 1st of the 1st, the 1st of January 1980. And my email is inside as a string, john at whatever, okay. Perfect, okay, that would have been perfect, so long as that's an at symbol. Okay. So insert, let's, have a, let's just double check before we actually execute, okay? Insert into members, first name, last name, date of birth and email, values inside roundy brackets, John in single quotes, comma, McCarthy in single quotes, so that matches to last name, comma, inside single quotes, my date of birth, uh, in a particular format, so it's quite important, and if we're not unsure of it, that's where we just go check what format is required for this comma, and then my email address. So one, two, three, four matches the values of one, two, three, four, okay? So when I'm ready, execute. And it's telling me that one row has been affected. Okay, fantastic. Now, if I want to store my query, I can just save it. So 
this could be a matter of do I want to actually save this so uh, control s and if I want to save this as a uh, test and then that's absolutely fine so that's my test script fine excellent so I'm going to create a new little tab for myself SQL 5 file so I want to see the information go in so how do I so how am I going to get some of my information back okay so I use basic select statements to retrieve information out I'm going to explain that in more detail for the next video okay so I'm just going to say select star from keep our syntax select star from members retrieve all of the information that's stored in the members database table execute okay so we're getting a member ID of eight okay now we didn't enter a members ID this is this is what we need to be careful of okay this is the auto increment now why is it starting at eight well when I was setting up our little tutorial and I just testing that everything's working I inserted seven rows of information and I deleted them before I restarted here okay so when I inserted the next one it started counting at eight so I'm getting first name of John last name of McCarthy date of birth of 1980 and my particular email address okay so <clears throat> that's the basics of inserts now if I wanted to um, run another insert statement so I've added the four pieces of information in let's say I just want to add two in so I am going to uh, let's see I'll comment out what I have here so minus minus space and minus minus space that just comments out my first insert okay so that when I rerun again I don't want it to execute so it's like it's basically I've commented this out so I'm going to add one more in insert into insert into member something values so I can come down the lines I could have le I could leave all this in one line across but it's easier to see when I actually go for insert into members then come down to the next line and say what values I'm interested in values and then I end the statement with semicolon okay insert into now I for this insert I only want to store two pieces of information I only know two pieces of information I only know the person's first name and their last name L A S T last name and I'm going to add in uh, Barry and a surname of Alan perfect now what about date of birth and e email I hear someone say so I don't have any information for database date of birth or email and neither of these fields are required so I should be able to run this insert statement and store information on a first name and a last name and I'm just going to store Barry for first name and Alan for last name perfect so I'm going to run execute and it's telling me see action tree one row has been affected okay excellent so I'm going to save this in case I want it for later on so save my my SQL so you should always save our SQL statements you've gone to the bother of running them or creating them we may as well save them and equally it's a nice bit of transparency or if you ever want to re-execute some of the queries again we have them as a backup okay so now I'm going back to select star from members execute now you see that there's two pieces of information in so I've row 8 and row 9 so John's there and now I have Barry Alan null and null the date of birth has no value and email has no value so I can choose with the insert statement what information I want to store now if it's if some of the values have been set to not null then we have to be careful in that they're the kind of minimum requirements that the table requires for information being stored and we'll show an example of that later on as well okay so I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any issues or questions, uh, please let me know.